frustration turn into elation as you turn your head to self-isolation decoration Hello there, Phil here from Paint the Town Green giving you some decorating tips and suggestions of things you can be doing around the house while you're stuck in lockdown. So today I'm going to tackle the complicated and thorny issue of wallpapering. Um, in a minute, I'll show you the equipment we need, but I need our paste to set, so before I do anything, I'm gonna show you how to mix paste. We're using a Solvite to paste the wall paper, so it's got a Solvite paste the wall paste, but the principle of mixing paste is exactly the same. I like to use a paint scuffer for this, not least of all because it has marked out measurements. You can come and have a look in here. I don't know if you can see this on the film, but you can see the little lines for quantities, and you always read on the packet how much water you need. In this situation, it says six liters. Most important thing when you're mixing paste, move the water while you drop the, the paste in. So do you want to just tune it? So you want to keep it moving. If you don't, you'll have lumpy paste. So I'm getting the water moving in a circular thing, and then slowly, a steady stream of paste going in. You pour it all in in one go, in static water, you'll get massive lumps. And then once the paste is all in, Keep stirring for about another 20, 30 seconds afterwards. I'm gonna stop stirring now, and I'm gonna let our paste set. Okay, so while our paste is just setting, I'm just gonna run you through the tools that we need. So if you come around here on the table, I've got a wallpapering knife with spare snap-off blades, a seam roller, a laying on brush, a spirit level, a straight edge, and here I've got a roller and a brush, because it's paste the wall paper, so it, that's for putting paste in the wall. Now, what I've done already, I know, I've read the label of my wallpaper, it's really important to read the label, because you never know when you're gonna get specific instructions for a certain type of wallpaper. I've read the, the, the label, I've measured the paper, I know that my paper is 52 centimeters wide, and my drops are gonna be about 2.5 uh, meters long. So what I've done on the wall here is I've worked out where all of my drops are going to go. The reason we do this is to make sure we don't get short bits stuck with a tiny little piece at the end. So each of these little dashes here represents where the edge of my paper is going to come. So I've got a short drop going above the door here and then a final little slit coming down here. I've my central drop, I've then got my spirit level and I've worked a straight edge and that's my guide point for my first drop to be lined up against. So all this I do before I even start thinking about hanging the paper, because the most important thing about wallpapering is planning ahead. So you don't suddenly get to the end of the wall and realize that you've got a tiny little slit that you're trying to fit in at the end because you're a tiny bit short, because it's very awkward to line up properly. Okay, I've let my paste sit for about five minutes now. What I wanna do, because this is paste the wall, paste, paper rather, uh, we're gonna paste the wall. Always wanna paste slightly more than you need, because if, you sh if you're short, if you're too narrow, you're going to have a little bit of uh, paper which doesn't have any paste behind it. So what we're going to try and do is paste probably two areas at a time and come into, so this is where my first drop's going to go, this is my second drop, and I'm going to go about that far past where the edge is going to be so I know I've got that covered, I've definitely got enough paste. Um, and this is just like painting the wall, so I'm going to cut in the edges neatly with a brush so I don't go on the ceiling, and then roll around the middle uh, with a roller. Okay, so I've pasted my wall, just going a little bit further than the need for two drops. We're only doing two at a time because it starts to dry out. Um, and it, if we were using paste the paper, uh, paper, we'd, do, we'd paste two, maybe three drops, they could be soaking, but you don't want to do too much of it as the paste starts to dry out tonight though. So we offer up our, our paper, allowing a bit of a sort of five centimetre overlap or so, so we've got a bit to cut with, we're not cutting it too tight. So we're going to start just at the top of the tiger's head, lining it up, you want to come around the same, see where I'm lining it up on the line. Putting it up to my guideline so I know I'm hanging it correctly. Following my line. And as we come down, we always brush it out from the middle, whether you paste the wall or paste the paper, you brush it from the middle. And I'm doing it off the roller's instructions so, so it's good across a bit. So I'm coming off a bit because I'm drifting away from the line. Making sure it's nicely on the line there. You see that? So I'm following my line. I'm happy with my line. I brush in the middle. I'm making sure the paper is nice and straight. You don't want to twist on it. If you pull it off to the side, you get a slight twist. 
that twist then gets carried on through all the drops that you do, which is why you start in the middle. So if you do have a slight twist, it gets evened out either way. What I'll do, take my line. I'm not gonna cut it accurately first off, I'm just gonna cut about five centimeters lower. So I can put my roll down. When it's placed the wall, you want to be careful you don't pick up the paste on your laying on brush. So just be careful when you get towards the edge. Otherwise you're dragging paste onto the surface of the paper. And we're happy it's gone on nicely. We get our straight edge. And we use that as our guide for cutting too. You use your fingers to press it in. Straight edge, flat against the thing. Take your blade. And there we have it, our first drop done. Use snap-off blades, you've got a more papering nice. When that goes blunt, you pull off the end there. It's got a little groove in it there. So you use that groove, you put the knife in there. I'm not gonna do it now because this blade is still fine. Put the blade in there and then you just snap. Be careful your eyes when you do it, because um, it can ping, but that's how a snap-off knife works. So always keep the blade nice and sharp. As soon as you feel it's starting to drag when you're cutting, replace the blade so you get a nice sharp edge. I'm gonna cut the bottom there, and I'm just gonna repeat that process Going that way, then going that way, working our way up from the middle outwards. Um, and I'll come back and we'll do around the door and show you how to cut around the doors and the light switches. So we're getting to a drop now which has got several challenging features in it, so it's quite good because it means I can demonstrate several things at once. Before I started, I loosened the light switch. You can see it's loose, so there's a little space behind it, and likewise the socket underneath it. Okay? And we've also got a door frame here. Okay? So I'm going to show you how you deal with these. So we start it just as before we find our pattern peak. Now, first obstacle, I've come to the door frame. So I'll find the corner of the door frame with my finger. There it is. I push down on the corner of the door frame, making a little mark in the paper. Okay, it's there. And then take my blade, push it into the mark I've made, and cut out diagonally. Okay, that should mean, if I've marked it in the right place, that that will then sit in there, the top bit, and I can start to come down the side of this bit. Okay, while I'm in there, I'm not going to tidy up that little nick a tiny bit, so it's good and true. Make sure there's no bits of paper on the blade. Yeah. So now my paper can continue to come down here freely. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is establish the end of my drop, so I haven't got to keep holding on to the roll. I'm going to come down, get my point, go a little bit past it as before. Knife out. Overcut. Put the roll down, less to play with. Next, I'm in roughly the right position. Again, I'm going to trim off the exit. Again, I'm not going to cut it exactly where I want it. I'm going to myself a few inches left, but I'm just going to get rid of this excess. Check our line again, how are we doing? Okay, so our next obstacle is our socket, our light switch rather. So let's find our light switch. We come back up, we find our light switch, which is down here. Same way as we mark the corner, we find the four corners of the light switch, checking our line is right, we're in the right place, we brush it to the middle, four corners of the light switch. One, two, three, four. Push it in, you just want to make a little mark on the paper so you can find it. Okay, what you don't want to do is slash while it's on the switch because otherwise you're going to score the switch and make a mark on it. So you find our corners, so one there, one there. Do those two first. Put it off into the middle from the corner. Into the middle. And again on this one, to the corner. Into the middle. I can't remember where the two top ones were, so I'm going to do that again. There they are. One of them's in Mr. Elephant's nose. Final one, checking our line, it's just there. Okay, so we cut all four corners in, which means that now I brush down and just push this. Just trim these bits off. I'm not pushing against the socket and making sure my blade never actually touches the socket so I don't mark it. Okay, 
That allows the paper to hang freely. I'll trim that back more neatly later. We're in the right place. Check my line. Box socket forward. Okay, I'm gonna carry on down. Same deal with the socket as there was with the light switch. Press on four corners. And there we have it. So our lines go a little bit in there. There we go. And use our brush. So I've gone around all my things. I need to trim it. Now I'm going to do a second little thing down here. Now I've got my line more clearly. I'm just going to take a bit more weight out of this again. Still not my final cut. Just taking the weight out. So it's you're more prone on these thin strips to get a twist because it's thinner. So it's more prone to twist that maybe overlap at the bottom or come out. So you just concentrate on that. But that's why you never start with a thin strip. You always start with a full drop to minimize the chance that you've got to twist in anything. So I'm trim this paper down. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna cut all the edges where it meets the door frame, where it meets the skirting board, where it meets the ceiling. And then last of all, I'll show you what to do with these sockets. Okay, the last bit, I've trimmed around the architrave, I've trimmed the top of the ceiling, I've trimmed the skirting. Now I'm just gonna tidy up around the sockets. You saw me cut the tip off those Vs earlier. Now all we do is we just pull the socket away from the wall as far as possible and we just tuck these leftover bits of paper behind. Okay, so that's the sockets all cut around, that is the drop, that drop done, that was Definitely the most challenging drop in this wall, and it was quite good because it allowed me to illustrate the two biggest things that you'll have to work around when you're wallpapering, going around door frames and going around sockets and light switches, and it had it all in one drop. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention at the start is that you should also always have with you a bucket of water and a sponge. The sewer is just a little bit darker in places, this is where I've just taken a sponge with the warm water, and a little bit of paste has got in the front of it, just wiping it down, and that dries, you won't be able to see it. Um, but always have warm water and a sponge. You can also, if you've got any paste on the architrave or whatever, just clean them down as you go. Okay, and that's it. I've filled in the gaps of the last two drops there. Last two bits done there. I've managed to get this little slim thin strip down here, and that is it. A feature wall wallpapers.